Hi, hello, my dear friends. Welcome back to this channel. How is life going on? Today, I will talk about one of the important topics of wireless uh, communication, that is uh, multipath propagation. So here, I will start with uh, uh, of uh, wide communication and uh, wireless communication uh, differences, and from there on, I will pick on. The concepts related to multipath propagation all right so we'll see the difference first so in, in wide communication um, as we know if there is a, a transmitter and the receiver between transmitter and the receiver uh, uh, we will have a dedicated cable right so the signal uh, transmitted uh, from the transmitter will receive the signal via this cable uh, uh, in only one path that is a single path all the signal will contain within the cable so what happens since there is only one path uh, available uh, how would be the receiver receiver looks very uh, simple receiver is simple okay so so since uh, there is only uh, uh, you know uh, since there is a cable running between transmitter and the receiver and uh, how about the infrastructure infrastructure is very huge right you, you need a huge infrastructure so we, uh, uh, so this makes the system very costly and a lot of maintenance is required so now, now let us come to uh, uh, wireless uh, uh, communication systems. So in this, the signal is transmitted from the transmitter to the uh, receiver uh, uh, over the air. Uh, the signal will travel uh, in multiple directions and it will reach the receiver. Correct. So here we will have uh, multipart. So since the signal uh, reached that receiver have a multiple components, how do we have to process it? We need to take care or we need to ensure that the signal, the signals received at receiver are processed properly so that it will help for uh, further, uh, mm, further processing. So if we don't process it properly there may be a chance that the we might lose the signal okay so because of that reason uh, you know uh, the receiver becomes very complex there is more processing involved and uh, and hence uh, uh, we need a complex receiver of course infrastructure wise compared to wide communication it is pretty much uh, uh, simple and uh, it could lead to less cost but uh, there are many other challenges related to uh, related to uh, wireless communication uh, so if you can overcome those uh, challenges okay uh, by processing the uh, signal very efficiently then we can get much much uh, uh, bigger benefit uh, in case of wireless communication so these things we will see in the upcoming videos but uh, for now uh, we will focus on in this video we will focus on uh, the multi part uh, thing okay so now now we will see why why uh, signal uh, traveled in multiple directions okay so there was a uh, transmitter and we had a receiver so the signal is transmitted over the air and uh, over the air uh, we have got uh, uh, many phenomena right like uh, if we, uh, if you go back to your physics concepts there are many uh, concepts uh, which will apply over the air the first one is uh, scattering so in case of scattering um, 
the signal uh, when when the signal eats uh, a particle okay let's say this is a particle the si let's say the signal has transmitted and it eat the particle and from that particle the signal would travel uh, in multiple directions so this scattering will happen when your uh, signal wavelength so signal wavelength is order of uh, 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 i mean signal wavelength is approximately same as uh, the size of particle so so uh, so what happens let's say this is the like uh, signal with power p but after uh, eating the particle when the signal scatters uh, there is some uh, reduction in the power okay let's say here uh, for time being it is uh, p by 3 p by 3 p by 3 so then this signal would uh, uh, continue and it will eat another particle let's say it has transmitted in uh, multiple direction and like that it will it will reach this is one of the path path of the signal which has reached receiver this is happening because of scattering as you can see that uh, uh, as signal travels uh, uh, there is a reduction in the power right due to scattering and uh, uh, that uh, that uh, relation we can bring it with the path loss as well so but uh, uh, for now one of the component is uh, one of the uh, factors which is resulting in multiple uh, directions is uh, the scattering okay so let's say this is path number one now here in scattering i want to mention one more thing that is uh, um, i was mentioning that uh, signal wavelength should be uh, having uh, uh, you know the size which is equivalent to the size of the particle now Now let us say, uh, usually the, what is the size of the particle? It's very, very small, right? Very small. So very small means uh, it could be uh, in, 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 in centimeters or it could be in millimeters. So if uh, your wavelength is uh, very high, then, uh, then, then what happens to scattering? wavelength is very high scattering will be less but if wavelength is very small then uh, your scattering is very high so when you move from actually uh, centimeter waves to millimeter wave you see that the scattering is very high all right The second concept which I want to talk uh, over here is uh, the reflection. So between the transmitter and the receiver, okay, let, let me go back to the uh, same uh, picture. Uh, let's say you encounter one kind of uh, uh, reflector over here. So let's say signal transmitted in this direction and it did the surface and it reflected back and reached uh, the receiver. So here also there will be some loss of, uh, of uh, power there could be some absorption uh, and then, then there is a, a reflector because reflectors need not be a idealistic reflector where whatever signal uh, with power p is coming uh, the same power will be reflected it will be usually like if the power p is uh, eating the surface then it would be a p dash less than p okay some absorption will be there and hence uh, uh, we will uh, see a little bit less power over less power at the receiver so what about the third concept which is diffraction so in case of diffraction let's say uh, the signal has transmitted uh, from this direction and uh, it is meeting an obstacle which is a sharp obstacle so it hits the obstacle and the actually the signal is supposed to uh, uh, travel in this way but because of obstacle uh, the signal has uh, got diffracted and reached the receiver in this direction so 
this is another phenomena where uh, uh, you know you will see that uh, there could be a multiple uh, component of the signal all right we have seen the the three uh, uh, different phenomena uh, uh, because of which we can have multipath uh, components now i want to talk about a couple of uh, basic concepts uh, uh, in order to uh, you know model the uh, signal which is received at the receiver okay so the, the first basic concept is uh, the path loss so path loss um, as i was telling in scattering also we will lose some in reflection in diffraction also uh, we will in all these cases we will lose some amount of uh, uh, some amount of power okay but uh, uh, these uh, so this reduction in the formula uh, has been uh, modeled uh, uh, has been modeled and uh, we see that uh, if we if we go through the equation of path loss you will see that uh, the path loss is directly related to uh, d by lambda okay so which means if the signal travels more distance there could be more scattering and because of which uh, uh, there is a more path loss or let's see if we have uh, the signal with uh, uh, wavelength uh, uh, with certain wavelength so let's say if wavelength is going too low maybe from uh, meters to centimeters to millimeters then we will see that the path loss is very high or in other words if we talk about frequency if we are going from just megahertz uh, to gigahertz to uh, uh, you know greater than 30 gigahertz of uh, like that then then we will see that uh, there is a uh, so here uh, the frequency is increasing your path loss will increase all right so if we take the equation we, we will see uh, we, uh, i mean how this is uh, incorporated in the equation uh, but uh, right now you got the concept that uh, if the signal travels a longer distance uh, you will see the path loss okay the second thing which i want to explain uh, is the delay because between the transmitter and the receiver uh, if uh, the signal is uh, uh, you know traveling a, a longer distance which means uh, uh, it has it will be reaching little late correct so the signal uh, this one might uh, um, reach t naught this one might reach uh, t1 is equal to uh, t naught plus delta uh, this one actually might reach uh, 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 t2 is equal to um, t1 plus delta okay so there is a, a there is a different delay which is uh, which should be applied to each of the multipath components so then what do we say about the signal received at uh, the receiver so let's say there is one component which is a line of sight component and now let us say there is one more component and finally i will put uh, three dots and then uh, there is another last component <coughs> let's say total there is a l is equal to uh, number of uh, multipaths so then um, then we can say that y of t this is x of t which is transmitted so it is the same signal which is traveling in all these uh, directions but uh, uh, these signals will undergo a different kind of uh, uh, channel effects and uh, it will reach the receiver so at the receiver we are supposed to get uh, the same signal x in the line of sight let's say this is first part second part and this is lth part so first part uh, uh, let's say x1 of t plus uh, uh, x2 of t plus xl of t so uh, what about x1 x1 let's say uh, it has it has undergone uh, some uh, attenuation uh, and uh, it is a naught 
uh, a naught uh, corresponds to i would say uh, ai corresponds to amplitude amplitude of the signal so now this is x of t minus tau zero so th these are all delays now plus x2 which is uh, so a2 actually uh, oh one second so oh so okay uh, let me write it and delay so this is so here the what is the condition the condition is uh, so your uh, a1 actually amplitude will be greater than a2 and it will be greater than al right and in, in terms of delay as well what is the condition so your uh, uh, tau 1 actually this delay will be less than tau 2 and tau l So I hope uh, this is uh, uh, clear. Uh, I mean, in terms of uh, a DAG, in terms of I want to just show in terms of uh, some uh, diagram. So this is let's say time. This is let's say amplitude. Okay. So this is let's say the reference point. So the first component received at uh, uh, which is uh, tau 1 right at tau 1 if you see it there is a signal with the greater amplitude a1 then at uh, tau 2 so tau 2 is late and here if you see uh, this is a2 then finally we will have al at tau 1 so if you see you know the signal amplitude is getting reduced as and when it travels a longer distance and uh, and also like as and when it travels longer distance you will see that uh, the delay is also increasing with this i want to stop in the upcoming video i will talk about uh, one of the effects of the multipath so multipath will lead to a a, a important concept in uh, uh, wireless communication that is called fading which is a multipath fading we'll talk about uh, uh, fading in the upcoming video thank you my dear friends please do subscribe if you like this video and there are many uh, more upcoming videos uh, coming into uh, uh, coming into picture. I will uh, talk about all of them in the upcoming videos. Thank you.